He calls in. Oh, Oracle Cook. Okay, this first clip is taken from episode 111 of Dragon Ball Z. And Vegeta is on a planet beating up a bunch of Freezer soldiers. And, and then he feels a key, which, feel, which he thinks is Kakarot's, on a different planet. And so he leaves the planet and flies over to the other planet where he thinks Goku is. Now he would have to leave the planet's atmosphere in order to travel to this other planet. Because if these planets were too close together, their gravities would pull each other and the planets would collide. And then another thing is, how do we know if these planets have atmospheres at all? It's not really explained. I mean, it could be possible that there are beings that don't need an atmosphere or that don't need oxygen that, or that survives on some type of element or atom, you know, or they may not, or there may be beings who don't need none of that at all. So, this episode is filler though. I mean, I haven't come across um, any evidence that, you know, uh, Akira Toriyama had like any, I any of his ideas introduced into this episode. So, but I mean, if, if you're a person who only takes the manga as canon and okay I understand I totally understand that I mean but if you're a person who like kind of separates canon into like manga canon and anime canon then this might be acceptable to you and then hell if the dude turns out that Akira Toriyama has something to do with this part of it then even more bonus to you but uh if you're not accepting this no problem no worries let's move on some more evidence to come Okay, this clip is from episode 11 of Dragon Ball Z. In this episode, Vegeta blows up planet Arlia. He uh, flies out with his spaceship and then opens the pod so that he can blast it. Now, yet again, how do we know if this... Does this planet have atmosphere? How do we know that? I mean, and then like, is, is, is he, is, is his space pod, is he in his space pod still in the atmosphere if it does have one? I mean, how do you know? Did you measure it? If so, how? I mean, it's never stated. And, and then Vegeta would have to be far out, like away from this planet because it's like, it's an, it's an exploding planet. Why would you risk destroying your only transportation? I mean, you know, people speculate uh, that they're you know, saying that like it's oxygen being, you know, released from his pod, so he's still able to breathe it. But I mean, normally you see some type of indication of that, like some type of air waves, you know, like wind or something like that. I mean, also there's a vacuum, so wouldn't the, you be able to somehow see the air being sucked from the the space pod? I mean, wouldn't you see Vegeta's hair move or his clothes moves at all? Like, I mean, I, I didn't see none of that. All I saw was, like, you know, flashing lights from the explosion of the planet. I mean, and then another thing, too, is that, like, you know, fire needs O2 to, you know, as fuel. I mean, fire needs air for fuel. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that plays into, you know, him still being able to breathe and whatnot. You know, I don't know if the, the explosion of the planet is going to, like, take away oxygen in some way, but... I mean, that's might be getting kind of too scientific with it, but you know, I'm just trying to think of all the variables. But uh, this this episode is also a filler episode. Um, but you know, it could possibly have been uh, a Kira Toriyama, a Kira Toriyama's idea because, like. On Konzenshu.com, they just came out um, with some recently finding out that uh, the launch, the launch filler that was in the anime was uh, Toriyama's idea, you know, and that was during the Saiyan Saga, and this is during the Saiyan Saga as well. But I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, that's not saying directly that you know, the this episode was, you know, his idea. But I have you know a whole page showing 
a bunch of filler that was Akira Toriyama's idea. But this, that was a while ago. They, this this new launch uh, stuff that they came out with, they finding out that it was Akira Toriyama's plan and stuff. So that's new. So, I mean, it's, it still could be possible that, you know, some new information comes out that, you know, he has something to do with this. But, I mean, I mean still, I guess, yeah, it's not concrete. I mean, so again, if you're one of those people who only take manga as canon, because it was 100% Kira Toriyama, and, you know, and, or if you want to, I can understand, I can still understand that. Um, but again, if you're one of the people who separated, separates it into anime and manga, then that, uh, that may satisfy you. But if not, let's continue on. Now, let's get into the Bardock special. Okay, in these pics we see Bardock blasting off into space to go face Frieza. Now, I mean, again, like, once you, you look at the picture, you see how far out he is. I mean, but, you know, how, how you gonna make the argument that he's still in the atmosphere? I mean, what layer of atmosphere is he in? I mean, and how do you know? Did you measure, measure it? I mean, it's never really stated. And, uh, I mean, uh, the best I could do is, like, get get one of these graphs and, like, eyeball it, really. I, I, but... And if I was to look at it, I would say he's in the either if he if if he is in the in, a, in some type of atmospheric layer, I would either have to say he I would have to say he's in the exosphere. I guess you can say he's in the thermosphere at at the least if you want to go that far if you want to lowball it. And uh, uh, the only other indication, I mean, cause like in the thermosphere you have the, you have the, uh, the, the aura, the auras that happen, you know, they happen in the thermosphere. And like, uh, I'm not, I mean, the only thing I can see that's maybe close to an aura is like the glow from the planet. Okay, you have the planet right there, but you see that glow on it. I don't know if you would count that as the aura, you know? Um, but if, if it is, then that would be the thermosphere and you you would see that Bardock's way beyond that. So, I mean, then like, so if, if even if he is in the exosphere, or if, even if he's not out of space and in the exosphere, I mean, the exosphere, is basically is basically uh, out of space. I mean, according to these uh, these pages I have, I mean, you're pretty much in a vacuum right there. Um, let, let's 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 uh, entertain the thought. Let's say he is in a thermosphere. All right. And then you guys, you guys, I normally hear people say, uh, well, it, it's, it's thin air there, like, but it, it's still air there. So I guess you telling me that, you know, sands can survive on a small amount of oxygen pretty much, right? All right. So I have this, uh, page here that says that NASA has found breathable oxygen oxygen molecules found in space so by your, your guys logic you know since sands don't need you know a lot of it to survive they, you know they don't need little they it'd be good so since they found oxygen in space that that means then that would mean you know the sands can travel around in space and be able to breathe because they only need a little like you said right i mean you didn't give no specific measurement i mean and how can you How do we know if they don't just need one atom of oxygen? 
It's never stated in the anime or the manga. And for those uh, trying to question the canonicity of the Bardock special, okay, long story short, um, Akira Toriyama watched this special when it came out and he was very pleased with it. Like he liked it so much that he incorporated it into the manga, as you see here. Now, if you want the like full scoop, fleshed out stuff about it, uh, it will be on the Kanzenshu website, which I'll be putting in the link below. And they have like a podcast on it, so I'll yeah, so that stuff will be in the uh, description as well. And do that and beyond and be just fine even though the troposphere is near vacuum now for this part section right here this comes from Dragon Ball chapter 17 when Goku takes on the rabbit game and takes them to the moon no, no joke. He takes them all the way to the moon. Let's see how y'all can get out of this one. Now, let's take a look at our Goku. Okay, so he's back now and just came from a little trip from the moon, right? Doesn't, doesn't look like he has swelled up to me. He looks normal as he did when he took off. I mean, it doesn't look like his eyes or mouth are dried up. I mean, or his nostrils or, or whatever. It doesn't look like his eardrums rush, ruptured. Uh, looks like he, he's still all jolly looking, you know? Hmm. I do not see any indication of him being on the moon you know, it looks like he never left and went to the moon at all, really. So, I, all this stuff would happen if he would went to the moon, so I don't, I still, so how can you say, you know, Sans can't survive out, out of space? Well, I don't, how, how can you refute this at all? <laughs> Okay, now guys, I'm gonna ask you a question, right? So, let me give you a scenario. Let's say it's a group of guys, you know, big burly guys, and they come in to beat you up, and possibly your family, or you know, someone you love. Now, on your right side, you got like, AK-47s and Uzis, and you know, those sorts of things. Now on your left side, you got a bomb. Now the bomb is super powerful, so even if you, you know, if you set that off, you, you're probably gonna be going with them. Well, most definitely gonna be going with them because of the huge explosion. So tell me, which one would you use first? Oh, are you back? Okay, so I say I take it that you uh, you said, of course I would I would choose the the AK-47 and the Uzi and the guns first. Cause why would I? Why the hell would I kill myself when I got this? These other weapons right here that will easily do the job, and I'll you know keep my body and, and soul intact, right? It would make no sense at all to use the bomb, right? It, it, it's, it's not a complicated thing to understand, right? I mean, you ain't got to be a genius to understand that. So I, I believe we all in agreement here, right? So. Now, with that being said, let's move on to this part right here. Here you see 
this is this is the uh, part where Vegeta freaking charges up a steroid gallic gun to blow up the planet. Okay, so Vegeta's for the blow up. Think about that. Vegeta's for the blow up the planet, right? So now tell me this. Why would Vegeta go and do that? Why would he, you know, blow up the planet, you know, and, 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 and you know, kill itself? Because, you know, you, you guys saying that Saiyans can't survive in outer space, right? So that's pretty much suicidal to, to blow up the planet. Why would Vegeta do that? Like, when he could have, like, went great ape. Right? I mean, because, like, really, if you if you going the if you going to blow up the planet and you can't survive our space, that would seem like a last-ditch effort. Like, well... I mean, you got the great ape. You could. It would make more sense for you to do that first rather than just blow up the planet and kill yourself, right? Because you know he's saying you can't survive out of space. So just like the bomb thing, like okay, if if the guns didn't work, like say if you didn't have any bullets, okay, then you ain't gonna have no choice but to use the bomb because these people gonna. Do all stuff, do all types of stuff to you and potentially your family, and like, you know, or, or maybe do something even worse. Or who, who knows? But I'm just saying, you like, why would you go to, why would you go to the extreme I mean, first okay, rather than something that you know that could possibly I, take care of the situation, no you know, without any on. drawbacks? That makes no sense at all. And Vegeta, Vegeta is a freaking genius when it comes to combat. If you really watch Dragon Ball Z, you would know that Vegeta's a genius. So this, so how, how you, so how, 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 so how can you say, so how can you say he, he, he can't survive in space? I mean, you, you can't say that, uh, oh, he was going to blow up the planet and then like use a spaceship to leave off. There's no way in hell that spaceship was going to survive that, that explosion. Freaking Gohan easily destroyed that spaceship. And, and he was at what, a power level of 1,307? Come on now, Vegeta, after he powered up against Goku, he was like around 18 grand. I was able to calculate his uh, battle power, you know, when they fight each other and like, seeing how close it is, you can kind of get a good estimate of, you know, where they're at and stuff, you know, because they give battle powers on the people that they fighting already and so kind of get an estimate on that. Plus, Kanzenshu has a battle powers page that, you know, gives you the lowdown on that information. I mean, I... And then not only that, he he is charging the hell out of this garlic gun. And, and if you look back, you will see that they pow the power, the battle power is even higher when they uh because you know they charging their key into uh, concentrating their power into into this one point. So that means this garlic gun is way above just 18 grand because he charging the hell out of that damn thing and then like once man and and that that gala gun colliding make an impact with the planet that, there's no way that that freaking spaceship is gonna last that is, is gonna be undamaged there's no freaking way that it's gonna work at all i mean and then like he even freaking broke his goddamn scout scouter so he can't like call for one i mean I, it, even if he did call for one, he would have to like wait somewhere. I mean, he would have to either be in space waiting or go to some planet, you know, and wait there if he was to call for a spaceship. Also, if you're thinking about it, they're pretty much space pirates. They have to go through, go to planet after planet, you know, to capture it and sell it off. Like in these planets, how do you know what that atmosphere is like? It could be totally different from the next planet. So how 
you're going to be a conqueror of planets when you can't even, you know, survive in various amounts of atmospheres. All right, guys, this is uh, going to be my last bit about saying surviving in space. Actually, I'm going to even go farther than that on this one. Even humans can survive in space. Now, check this picture out right here. It is Broly using key, a key shield to carry him and his father across the spe you know, out, out of space, you know, to survive from the destruction of planet Vegeta due to Frieza blowing it the hell up. Now you say, oh, how, so how does this equate to even humans surviving out of space? Dude, it's it's a it's pretty it's it's not a complicated concept. It's just you know making key in, uh, in a sphere, and you know you just you gather the atmosphere that's are that you're already in. It's inside your, your space bubble, your key bubble. I mean, like anybody can do it. It's like 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 uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can play like a lot of Dragon Ball Z games. Like any anybody can do a, a freaking basic key blast. And, and like the thing is, it's like uh, okay, say back in uh, Dragon Ball, like when Master Roshi did Kamehameha, Goku uh, asked him could could he teach him how to do the Kamehameha, and Master Roshi was like it took me it'll, it'll be a while because it took me 50 years to master the Kamehameha. Oh, it'll take some time, Sonny. But then go uh, next thing you see is Goku do a Kamehameha and shoots uh, Bulma's car, and then. After that, I mean, you see Tien, when he fought against Master Roshi, he never used Kamehameha in his life. And then that was his first time using him against uh, Master Roshi. And uh, let's see, what else? What else was that? I mean, it's like, hmm. Oh, flying. The first people you see to fly in the series is uh, uh, Tien and Chaozu. I mean, what well, Piccolo been technically was flying before them since he's older than them. But yeah, the first people you see flying is Tien and Chaozu. Then lo and behold, uh, sometime after that, you see everybody and their moms flying. You see Goku, Piccolo, Krillin, like everybody fly after that. I mean, so so what I'm trying to sh show here is that Broly is not the only one who cre create a, a, a shield made out of key. I mean, hell, like, uh... Vegito made one when uh, he protected himself from being absorbed by uh, Buhan. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess you, you can say uh, Android 17 got it too. You know, he protected himself from being uh, hit by Piccolo's Hell Zone grenade. Who else did that joint? Um, I guess Frieza sort of did it, but not really in the fight against um, Vegeta. Like, uh, when Vegeta, like, shoots the big, the super big uh, galley gun at the at Namek, and Frieza knocks it back, and Vegeta gives up. Frieza, like, piles up first, and you'll see, like, his key goes into a bubble first, then he shoots forward towards Vegeta and, you know, headbutts him. But, I mean, I mean, I, I guess that's not really a key shield. It's more of him just, like, kind of sort of like burst dashing but I mean it's like I mean wh why couldn't he like if he wanted to make a shield why couldn't he I mean he put he put Goku in a psycho ball I mean I, yeah so again it's like just these techniques aren't techniques stuff stuff like this you know isn't limited limited to just one person like every everybody has key even the first uh person first person that uh Radis came to use a scouter on head key. I mean, he, it, yeah, his key was only like five, and you know, he has a train, so yeah, a, a regular human, you know, an untrained human wouldn't be able to, but everybody has key. If you, if you got like enough and you, you know, you train, you know, to hone it, you can make a, a key shield too. You can do all that stuff. I mean, now the, the color and the, and the power of, and then you know the amps, and the amps of the power, and all that—that that may be different, vary from person to person. But you know, just making putting key around you, that don't sound like that's that's not that's not you know uh, equal to like say um, like body change or you know shouting so loud that you rip a hole in reality or whatever. I mean, it's 
it's, it's not that complicated. It's, it's just you, you, using your key, you know, and everybody has key. And then like, I mean, I guess you, you can debate like on like how long they'll be able to hold up their key maybe like, and like how much air that they will be able to put inside of it. I mean, like, I mean, it's, it's like uh, for humans at least, like you, we breathe in oxygen and we release, we release carbon. So, I mean, I guess like if you got a lot of key, you should be able to make a, a, a really big uh, key shield, you know, and that'll last you, you know, until you like get to your destination or maybe you can do like pit stops, like with, like with cars, you know, you stop for gas or maybe you, you will stop at a planet and then, you know, you release whatever, you know, you, you, you release all the carbon and then you make, you, you rest up and then make <laughs> another key shield and then you know you keep traveling like that you know you got the atmosphere back in so now you got oxygen again and then hell if you if you like really powerful you should be able to make a really big one I meant carbon dioxide by the way I guess it wouldn't really matter for Frieza making a, a, a key shield and surviving the space <laughs> it's pretty much a fact that he can survive well it is a fact that he can survive in space Uh, and some of you probably try to make the argument, but Frieza, Frieza said that uh, that Saiyans can't survive in space. Yeah, this is the same guy who says the Super Saiyan was nothing but a legend and a joke. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, there's this one little detail. He's not a Saiyan. I mean, and like, and this also goes into the argument of like, well, why does Goku use use a space suit and why does he uh, hop in a spaceship? I, I mean, like, you know, Goku, he had like a head injury. He didn't know jack squat about the Saiyans. He, he just found out about the whole transforming into a great ape that he that he could that he that it was him who was doing all that great ape stuff when he fighting Vegeta and that was like when he was 24 years old. But Vegeta, like he knows everything. He's the prince of all sins. Like he he knows this stuff. I mean, you see, you see this dude going going like doing doing all that that stuff that I uh, mentioned prior. And like um. And also, uh, yeah, Frieza and Goku are fighting to the death. Why would you want to tell some information say, to your um, enemy to help them out? I mean, you could look at it as, as a taunt to try to throw Goku off his game. And also, like, Frieza, he uses spaceships. And, and we know he can survive in space. I mean, just because you survive in space doesn't, you know... I mean, just because you survive space don't mean you don't want to ever use a spaceship. Hey, make you more comfortable, shoot. You know, you can, like, you can enjoy yourself or get some rest while you're on your travel, yada yada. Shit, comfortability, I guess. You know? Why use a bike when you got a car? Well, for gas purposes. <laughs> you know? And for those of you all who like will try to bring up stuff from the other series like Dragon Ball Super or Dragon Ball GT, um, yeah, but none of those are counted because Akira Toriyama isn't like with the manga and stuff. We know Akira Toriyama. That's 100% Akira Toriyama. No, no, and, and it's. Everything, that's where it all started. Everything is derived from the manga, the original uh, 8, 1984 to 1995 Dragon Ball manga. Everything is derived from that. that that's where it all started, you know, from, from beginning to finish. It was all a curator. And uh, save, save the... the uh, Save the, the canon and all that and how much Akira Toriyama did this and that. Save that for, I'm gonna save that for a different video cause I'm, a, I'm going to address that in a, in a different video. But let's just keep this, well, 
I guess you, you got, I don't know. Well, I guess it's, you know it's the internet, so people still gonna be jerks out there. But uh, I mean, if if you can't wait for me to put out the uh, video addressing, you know, Akira Toriyama's uh, involvement with the newer series and stuff like that, I'm just gonna send you to this website. One of my sources is a uh, konzenshu.com. You guys don't have to subscribe, but if you can spread this to inform the Dragon Ball community. Be a positive thing to do. Sayonara.